Now that we have completed our workflow for 1516 outflow, we need to do the same process to prepare the 1516 inflow. We could do this by repeating all of the steps individually using each of the tools and configuring them as we did in the previous videos for the outflow workflow. Or one of the values of Alteryx is that it allows us to completely copy both the tools and the replicate and the configurations and replicate that process by making minor alterations to the configurations. So we're going to select the second option because that is much faster than doing it from the beginning. In order to copy the workflow, you can go ahead and hover over the container that we created. You're going to want to go ahead and click on that using your right click button. And when you do so, you'll find the submenu and you're going to select copy from that. Just as an aside, all of the keyboard shortcuts, including control C, V, X, and Z, which is the undo command, also work in Alteryx. Now that we've copied it, go ahead and move your mouse to a blank space within the canvas. Right click again and go ahead and click paste. When we do so, we see that we've completely copied the outflow workflow. But now we want to reconfigure this to be for the inflow workflow. We'll begin by starting and double clicking on the 1516 outflow name and we will go ahead and replace that with inflow for 1516. So go ahead and for that, hit enter. Now we have our workflow appropriately named. Next, we need to bring in our inflow worksheet, not our outflow worksheet as we have in our previous one. So to do so, we'll go ahead and click on our input data folder. We'll select the drop down menu using the same connection that we recently did because it's coming out of the same file. And we're going to go ahead and click on the drop down menu to select the state inflow file. Once we've selected the state inflow sheet, we can go ahead and hit OK. And now you're going to want to run about the errors that you see down here in our window. We also know that the error is coming from the filter. As we reconfigure our tools, that error will eventually go away. Now that we have the inflow sheet in, as opposed to the outflow sheet, which we can see up there, we want to go ahead and check that each of the tools is configured appropriately. So go ahead and click on your first data cleansing tool. What we can see is that all of the configurations that we used for the outflow have been retained, except we have one field that is not checked, and that's the Hawaii inflow field. The reason that this field is not selected is because this field did not exist for the outflow file. It was named Hawaii outflow instead of Hawaii inflow. So go ahead and select that tool to be cleansed or that field to be cleansed. You don't need to run it right now. We're not really changing the configuration and we know that it worked based on the outflow file. So now we can go ahead and do the same thing and take a look at this data cleansing tool, our second one. And again, all of our configurations were retained, but we need to select the Hawaii out inflow field. At this point, go ahead and work flow because we need to figure out if we still need to skip 10 rows. Remember what I said when we dealt with that in the video, that you can't take for granted that you'll need to skip the same number of rows every time. Even between the inflow and outflow worksheets, there can be differences. So to find out how many rows we need to skip, go ahead and click on the output anchor from the second data cleansing tool and scroll down in your data set until you find your first state observation. And for this particular year for Hawaii, the inflow also has record number 11 or row number 11 as the first row where we see state level data. So I can continue to skip 10 rows, which means I don't need to change anything on the configuration for that tool. Now we may need to move to the select tool. In the select tool, we can see that just like in the data cleansing tools, the Hawaii inflow field was not selected. But we also see the Hawaii outflow field and it's noted as being missing. Well, it's missing because there is no Hawaii outflow. It was replaced by the Hawaii inflow. So go ahead and uncheck that. Change the data type on the Hawaii inflow to double because now we want it to be written as a number just as we had done when we were dealing with the Hawaii outflow. Finally, in our naming reconfigurations, we had named three of our fields specifically with the words outflow. And we're now dealing with inflow. So we want to go ahead and change each of those to read inflow instead of outflow. So click on each twice, once within 
the rename field and the second time to get it specifically between the T and the F. And then go ahead and delete out the word in, out and type in the word in. Now we've completely configured our select tool. We can go ahead and run again. And now we see that we have one more thing missing. We still have an error code here. And so what it's saying is that we had asked the filter function to filter on Hawaii ID, yet it doesn't see a Hawaii ID. And it's because even though we checked the Hawaii inflow, I forgot to tell you to click on the Hawaii ID. Remember, this doesn't change your underlying data set. So even if you make a mistake, it's easy to go back in and reconfigure the tool to have the right uh, name in this case. Now that we've done that, we can go ahead and hit the run. And what we see is that our error code, which was denoted by a white exclamation mark in the middle of a red circle, has gone away. At this point, we have completely finished the 1516 inflow workflow, just as we had done with the 1516 outflow.